บุญดังบุญดังบุญดังวันเดดัมมังดัมมังดัมมังวันเดสังกังสังกังสังกังวันเดบุญดังดัมมังสังกังวันเดสัมมันตาจักเวาลิสุวัตรากัจฉันตุเดวทานสัตดัมมังมุนิราจัสเสสุนันตุสักเกมุกดัมดัมมัสสาวเนคาลุอายังบดันตาดัมมัสสาวเนคาลุอายังบดันตาดัมมัสสาวเนคาลุอายังบดันตานโมตัสสะบาเกตุอะระหะตุสัมมาสัมบุญดันสะนโมตัสสะบาเกตุอะระหะตุสัมมาสัมบุญดันสะนโมตัสสะบาเกตุอะระหะตุสัมมาสัมบุญดันสะเด็กเห็นเจ้าหนุ่มกำมะสีเดวะดัชเนนสัมปันโนขามิสุวินัยเกิดังนาฮิจัตุกัมเบเซียงปุณเรตีตีขมิสตุดบุตเดขมิสตุดดัมขมิสตุดสังเกขมิสตุดพิพัลเจสาดูสาดูสาดู most venerable n a i h a m b r o members of the Mahasangha, kind devotees, friends in Dhamma, here today you are gathering here for a special meritorious act, listening to Dhamma and listening to the Buddha's message. In this rainy retreat, the Los Angeles Buddhist Vihara conducts. This uh, Dhamma series. Every Sunday, you have a chance to listen to Buddha's message. Here today, the topic is that Karani m e t t a Sutta, the discourse of loving kindness. This is very familiar discourse for everyone. I think most of you can uh, recite this discourse without looking the book. Therefore, this discourse is very famous among Buddhists. When we discuss this discourse, we can see very clearly, even though we are very familiar with this discourse, actually our attention to this discourse is not enough. The reason is that we always discuss this discourse in the surface level. But it's here. Especially, we should understand the level that we should learn this discourse and how we practice this discourse in the higher level, as Buddha mentioned. First of all, I would like to explain the gradual path in Buddhism. Buddhism is like the ocean. Ocean deepens gradually, little by little. Buddhism also like that. Buddha says very clearly, "Naam bhikkhuve adi ke ne vanya radhana madami." I don't explain the highest in wisdom at the beginning on the path of liberation. Little by little, Buddha explains the highest position, what he wanted to say. Here, I think we should understand the gradual path in Buddhism. When we discuss Buddha's message, all Buddhist doctrines can be included into two. One of them is that 
the heavenly path the second one the deliverance path heavenly path means what it explains how we receive a blissful life hereafter that is the first advice that would has given secondly would it says deliverance path moksha marga the path to liberation sometimes would it explains only heavenly path sometimes would it explains only deliverance path sometimes would it explains both heavenly path and deliverance path according to the audience this discourse karana met sutta or met the sutta the discourse of loving kindness focuses on deliverance path before that i think it is better to understand the heavenly path to first would they explain how we receive a blissful life after we die for that would they has explained three meritorious deeds practicing generosity practicing virtue and practicing meditation three meritorious deeds the more we practice these meritorious deeds the more we purify our mind from greed and anger on the other side buddha explains what are the highest qualities that we can be sure that never we fall into the hell buddha explains in the discourse of abhisthanda punya abhisthanda the discourse of meritorious streams what are the qualities that we should practice to become a blissful life here after surely there are with the says eight qualities that we have to practice what they are buddha sarangato hoti going to the buddha for refuge dhamma sarangato hoti going to the dham for refuge sangha sarangato hoti going to the sang for refuge and also practicing five precepts panati pata pativiruto hoti abstaining from taking life adinnadana pativiruto hoti abstaining from stealing kami suvichachara pativiruto hoti abstaining from sexual misconduct musavarda pativiruto hoti abstaining from false speech and suramire madhyama dattana pativiruto hoti abstaining from intoxicating drinks and drugs causing helplessness practicing these eight qualities decide whether we are going to the blissful life or the lower elements hell when we see this path actually first of all we should be sure that i never fall into a hell by practicing these qualities we have a guarantee we have a security assurance that never we fall into a hell this is a very important guarantee that buddhism says after that when we see the discourse of blessing mangal sutta mangal sutta describes some several qualities that we should need to have a blissful life but they are mata pitu patana and when we take care of our parents and listening to dham khalena dham savana discussing dham khalena dham sakacha katanyuta gratitude dhammacharya ache virtuous life when we practice these qualities day by day our inner peace in peace and also if we have these qualities it means those are the real blessings supreme blessings that would say this is the heavenly path when we practice three meritorious deeds 
and also when we practice supreme blessings in the mangala sutta the discourse of blessing day by day our inner peace increases and also we can develop our happiness in this immediate life when we practice these qualities day by day our greed and anger reduce that is the main purpose of heavenly path which depends on the conventional truth with the understanding of the karmic law with the point at out the way how we receive a blissful life the interesting thing in buddhism when we practice these quality qualities actually we can make a heaven of brahma realm in this immediate life having a human physical body physically mentally we can live like a god like a brahma that is the very important thing in buddhism this is the first part of buddhism that heavenly path this discourse now we are going to describe the karani metta sutta the discourse of loving kindness focuses on deliverance path mokka marga however unfortunately mostly speakers explain this discourse only in the higher level conventional truth only heavenly path but we should be aware of that this discourse directly explains the deliverance path that is a very special word in first in the very first stanza in this discourse yantam santam padam abhisamich he who wishes to attain the state of calm should practice these qualities santa means santa is used for inner peace or enlightenment or liberation or enlightenment this is very important therefore no one can say that mm, this explains only heavenly path actually the karani metta sutta directly explains the path of deliverance how we attain the bliss of nibbana therefore little by little we should understand what is the meaning of this sutta here now i have already explained the heavenly path what are the qualities that we have to practice for a blissful life hereafter especially going to the triple gem for a huge by heart not only with our words if we have gone to the triple gem for a huge it means daily we can remember these three things a lot that is the sign that we have gone to the triple gem for refuge not only that practicing five precepts this is very important sometimes you may think that if you practice generosity if you have donated a lot of things you can have a blissful life it is not true if you have donated a lot of things to people or monks you can receive some material things in wherever you will be reborn but for a good life blissful life would emphasize the importance of practicing seela or virtue discipline in our speech and behavior that is the direct way to have a blissful life now we are going to explain the karani metta sutta karani metta sutta when we explain first of all we should know what is the reason that buddha explains this discourse in buddha's time mostly monks got advice instructions near the buddha and they went to the jungles meditated and received the results and finally they attained the enlightenment like that one of group came to the buddha and 
they got instructions from the Buddha, they went to the jungle which was located near the Himalaya forest. While they were meditating in the jungle, there were some divine beings in that forest. They were in the higher states. Divine beings were in the higher residences, but those monks were in the down level on the floor. However, those monks' virtues were higher than that they had. Therefore, they couldn't stay in the higher position, higher levels, higher trees or mountains. Therefore, they disturbed those monks. They wanted to move those monks because it is disturbed for them. Therefore, those divine beings showed some fearful forms, smells and sounds. At that time, those monks tried to bear those difficulties. They tried to stay in the same place again and again. However, finally, they failed. They couldn't stay in the same place and they couldn't succeed their spiritual goals. They decided to go to the Buddha. They went to the Buddha and they explained everything that they faced. They are Buddha. Buddha taught this discourse to those monks and Buddha advised them Buddha says them to go to the same place and chanting, contemplating on and practicing this discourse, Buddha advises them to practice this discourse staying in the same place. With that instruction, those monks went to the jungle which was located in the Himalaya forest. They were they were chanting this discourse. They were contemplating on this discourse. They were practicing this discourse. They meditated well. Finally, those divine beings, not only they didn't disturb, but they helped those monks finally. With the help of those beings and also by the power of those monks' spiritual qualities, they could achieve their spiritual goals. They attained enlightenment. And finally, they went to the Buddha and they explained their spiritual success. After that, this discourse has been practiced many disciples. Not only as a protective discourse, but as a meditation technique, as a gradual path, and also as a meditation technique, this discourse can be used by anyone. But we usually use this discourse as only a protective discourse, Asirvada Piritan. But if we know the meaning of this discourse, Actually, we can understand the Buddha's opinion, Buddha's message, and also we can develop our qualities to the maximum level. Not only that, we can make a very strong personality. When we learn psychology, philosophy, social sciences, anthropology, they explain, they teach us how we make a perfect personality. Actually, all those qualities can be included into this same discourse. And also, we are unable to compare their qualities with these qualities. These qualities are in the higher level. Therefore, if you want to make a very special, strong, perfect personality, here we can see the instruction. In this discourse, we can see the gradual path. Little by little, this discourse deepens. First, 
the Karani Mita Sutta explains the very first discipline which is Sila or virtue. And in the middle, the discourse explains the middle of the path. What is the Samadhi or Samatha or concentration? End of the discourse in the final stanza explains the highest position in the deliverance path that Panya or wisdom. This Karani Metta Sutta describes three disciplines, three with the six Sila, Samadhi, Panya. First, the discourse explains Sila or virtue or moral conduct. Next, we can see some instructions how we develop our concentration for Samadhi. Finally, the discourse explains the highest position of the deliverance path that Panya or Wisdom. You know, in this same discourse, we can see loving kindness and mindfulness. If you read some researchers of psychiatric for for five decades, all of them explain some qualities that need to practice to overcome stress. Mostly, they explain special qualities that what they are, loving kindness and mindfulness. For stress management, most of them explain the importance of practicing loving kindness and mindfulness. The same sutta we can see, Buddha says, Yantan santam padam abhisamech sabbe sattha bhavam sukhidatta. He who wishes to attain the peace of mind should have to practice loving kindness, contemplating on thus may all be, be well, happy and peaceful. We are mostly suffer because of anger. If we can overcome, if we can reduce anger, it means we can overcome more than 50% stress from our mind. Not only that, etan satin aditya, sati means mindfulness. This discourse describes the importance of having mindfulness. Mindfulness is highly praised in Buddhism. That is why Buddha says, Ekaino ayam bhikkave maggo satana visuddhya. This is the only path for the purification of beings. Soka paridhavana samati kamaya. For the destruction of lamentation and sorrow. Dukkha domana sana matthanda maya. For reducing of grief and pain. Jnana sadhika maya for the realization, for the attaining of knowledge, Nibbana Sasachikiriyaya, for the realization of liberation, this is the only path which is the Four Noble Truth. We are so fortunate. When Western psychiatrists describe these qualities, we have already heard this message before before 2600 years ago. Therefore, if we can practice this path, actually we can see the Buddha's goal, Buddha's advice, his message. In this discourse, we are unable to see the primary qualities, such as which come in Singala Sutta, Mangala Sutta, Vasala Sutta, Parabhava Sutta. Those instructions are not here. These instructions directly focus on liberation, how we eradicate not only greed and anger, but especially delusion or ignorance. Little by little, we are going to discuss this discourse. At the beginning, on the this course would say, 
that we should create. On the other side, Buddhism says very special thing, Ayatana Kusrata, skillfulness in senses, spheres. I hear knows like that. When we see something, when we hear something, when we smell something, we should be skillful that what happens to my eye and what happens to forms. We should be aware of our spheres or senses. This is the highest skill in Buddhism. The next quality that we should have honesty, being honest. If you say truth and that is one of the signs that you are honest. That is the primary quality. But again Buddha says, hmm, so huge. Again Buddha says, we should be perfectly upright. It has a deep meaning. Even though you tell truth, even though you are generous, even though you practice five places, sometimes you are not perfectly upright. Why is that? When you do something, if you are perfectly upright, you should think, when I do these things, my trusna ditti mana, greed, self-view and conceit increase or decrease. Whatever do you do, not only when you are at the temple, but wherever you are in, you should think, even you wear a clothes, even you comb your hair, you should think that whether my greed, self-view and conceit increase or decrease. This is the sign that you are perfectly upright. If you need to attain the enlightenment, you should have these qualities. Without these qualities, we are unable to attain the enlightenment. We can have a blissful life hereafter. As the result of practicing good deeds, actually already, you are sure that you have a good life hereafter. Because you have done a lot of meritorious deeds in your life. Even you have done, you have took care, taken care of your parents. It is enough actually to become a blissful life. But Buddhism emphasizes the importance of attaining the enlightenment. For that, we should have these qualities. Next, Buddha says, Suvacho Chasamudivaniti Mani. Suvacho means we should be gently spoken. Not only we should be spoke gently, but we should be gently spoken. What is that? It is different from obedience. Sometimes we can see some people explain the word of Suvacho as obedience. Obedience is not a quality according to Buddhism. Obedience means whatever elders or others say we are ready to do. That is obedience. In this Buddha Sasana, who was the very good obedient person? Angulimala. Angulimala was the very good, the best obedient person in this dispensation of the Buddha. Whatever his master explained, he did everything. He killed hundreds of innocent people. He, he was obedient. Therefore, obedience is not a quality according to Buddhism. Suja means active listening. That when someone says something, we should be ready to listen to what they say. It doesn't mean that we are ready to follow them. If it is correct, we can follow. If it is not correct, we are not ready to follow it. Suvacha means we should be gently spoken. That is the quality. 
when buddha started to preach the dhamma at the beginning buddha said hmm, etu vinyu puriso asato amayavi navanta jato ahandam mansa mansa sami sunata sunata means listening to dhamma active participation listening to dhamma they are for such is one of the qualities that buddha says here mudu means gentle and anadimani not conceited or humble and there are a lot of things we have to explain here but we specially explain the most important things in this discourse next buddha says santosha kocha subarocha santos means being satisfied we should have contentment or satisfaction with whatever we have already it doesn't mean that we sh- should stop earning something we can earn more things but we should be happy we should be satisfied with whatever we have already but when we see the society people always think that may i have a better life tomorrow that tomorrow never comes we see the good tomorrow they do everything until they die they are unable to reach satisfaction because tomorrow is tomorrow in this situation buddha says santosha kocha santutti paramandana contentment or happiness or satisfaction is the best wealth in this situation we have to be satisfied with whatever we have already have next with the says hmm, super easily supportable appati choche with few duties sallahu kavutti simple in livelihood here the discourse explains hmm, appati choche with few duties in the mundane level in the society if you are busy if you do a lot of things in the same time in your lifetime you are successful but buddhism doesn't say it if you wish to attain the peace of mind you should give the priority to do the best things that you have to do in your lifetime what is the reason jivitam anitam life is uncertain life is very rare we should do the very best things in our life therefore having few duties is the quality the skill in this path simple in livelihood next with the says hmm, santindriyocha nipakocha controlled in senses hmm. what are the senses i ear nose i tongue body and mind we should have discipline in these senses when we see something we should be wise what happens to my eye when we experience something through our senses we mostly depend on outside when we experience something our mind is fixed in outside things and persons but buddhism says that when you experience something through your senses you should be wise that what happens to your mind at the moment for example if a phone rings suddenly you look at it but if you are intelligent if you are wise you should understand what happens to my mind when i listen to that sound that is the real skillfulness in our life and uh, control in in senses also one of the qualities that this discourse explains next would it says nipaka nipaka means being wise being discreet discretion or wisdom is the most 
important quality that we should understand. Especially, Buddhism says here, understanding impermanence or anicca. What is the meaning of impermanence that Buddhism says? What is the meaning of impermanence? Understanding the anicca or the meaning of impermanence is the turning point whether we have chosen the heavenly path or not. Until we understand the meaning of impermanence in Buddhism, in Buddhism, we haven't started our spiritual path, deliverance path. Until we understand the meaning of impermanence, actually we don't know that the Buddha appears in the world. Be sure. What is the meaning of impermanence? When we ask someone what the meaning of impermanence is, mostly they say that everything is subject to change. You know, changing and impermanence in Buddhism are different. You know, changing can be realized by anyone. We don't need a Buddha to understand uh, when we, underst- we are going to understand the changing. Everyone can understand we are going to old age, we are subject to die, everything is subject to destroy. Buddha had realized this changing of Viparinama before he did his great renunciation. While he was going to the park with Channa, Minister Channa, actually the Siddhartha, Prince Siddhartha had realized the meaning of changing. Death, old age, sickness, he had realized. After Buddha attained enlightenment, Buddha says, Pubbe Anunusu Sesu Dhammesu Chappu Mudapadi Jnana Mudapadi I realized something that I had never heard. This has a very deep meaning. When Buddha attained enlightenment under the great Bodhi tree in Bodhgaya, Buddha realized a very special thing that Anicca, Anicca means that I is impermanent, forms are impermanent, ear is impermanent, sounds are impermanent, nose is impermanent, smells are impermanent, our tongue is impermanent, our body, mind, everything is impermanent. What is the meaning of impermanence? Impermanence in Buddhism means that they arise at the moment, they immediately cease. As the result of arising of seasons, reasons or causes, the experience arises at the moment. When causes or reasons cease at the moment, immediately the experience ceases. For an example, when you listen to this sound, you can listen to this sound. You can realize this Mic is impermanent. My eyes, my ears are impermanent. We can understand it in the common understanding. But sound is impermanent means before you heard this sound, it was not here. After you heard this sound, that experience doesn't remain. The experience arises at the moment with the conditions and it immediately ceases when conditions cease. And also, because of reasons, experience arises. Without reasons, there is no experience, but the experience doesn't belong to reasons. Because of my finger, this mic, because of my ear, we can hear the sound, but this sound doesn't belong to any reason. 
this sound doesn't belong to my finger this my my ears this sound doesn't belong to anything this is the nature of impermanence so any uh, that would has explained until you understand this truth you are not skillful according to buddhism understanding impermanence is the turning point whether we are ready to go to the deliverance path nipata means discretion wisdom means that understanding this impermanence first we have to understand through listening to someone this message next we have to contemplate on it again and again finally we can realize through insight meditation or vipassana bhavana ultimately we can achieve liberation this is the path that buddha has explained according to nipaka or wisdom next buddha says appagappo kulesu ananu kiddu not stubborn kulesu ananu kiddu not greedily attached to families in the conventional truth in the primary level if you have a very successful attachment to your family you are successful but when you go to the upper level in the absolute truth we should have less less attachment to families that is also one of the qualities this discourse explains next stanza of the says नचपुदान समाचारे किंचि येन विन्यो उपवादयो वी शुड नॉट डू एनी स्लाइट रॉन्ग थिंग दैट वाइज पीपल क्रिटिसाइज दैट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इवन दो वी डू गुड थिंग्स सम पीपल मे क्रिटिसाइज यू वी शुड नॉट केयर इट बट हियर देयर इज द मेजरमेंट दैट वाइज पीपल विन्यो ही समटाइम्स wise people are very few than other people huh? however for the says you should not do any slight wrong thing that wise people criticize you who are the wise people vichakun pana sevet sektam purusu pogana if someone knows hmm, this life can hear out If someone knows that mm, after you die what happens to you he is a very new person he is a wise person and uh, here we explained 15 qualities although there are 15 qualities here all of them can be included into 3 don't worry we have to practice 15 but finally all of them can be included into 3 what they are they are gently spoken honesty and discretion or wisdom if you are gently spoken if you are perfectly upright if you are wise you can go forward on this path this is very important with these qualities these qualities belong to very first level of deliverance path mokkha magi in buddhism which is moral conduct seela seela khand that is the very first step in buddhism buddha says if we want to overcome problems if we want to mental problems first of all we should have virtue or discipline we should have these qualities sile patittaya narvasapanyo chittam anyanti bhavaya having good moral conduct we should go forward on this path and next several stanzas in this discourse describe the importance of concentration or samadhi especially this discourse Uh, this guys mm, that the importance of practicing loving kindness metta bhavana 
we should spread love and kindness to everyone in this universe visible invisible small big all beings focusing on all beings we spread love and kindness thinking that may all beings be well happy and peaceful again and again we think not only we practice love and kindness mentally but we have to practice love and kindness by words or verbally and physically we should spread love and kindness mentally physically and verbally these three things are very important as the result of practicing love and kindness with a says mata yathan yam puttam ayushayak puttam anurakhe evam pisam bahu desu man sambhavya pariman this is the highest attitude of practicing love and kindness what is that you know if a mom has only child she loves that child a lot like that when we meet a person when we hear a person when we remember a person we think that that person is like my only son or daughter if we have this highest attitude actually we are so fortunate our mental state is very high buddhism points out that to become this state of mind this is the highest example in buddhism if we have this attitude actually we don't go to criticize others we take care of others not only that we practice loving kindness without boundaries we have no any boundary when we practice this loving kindness here it is very important to understand friendliness and loving kindness metta and mitta are different mitta is limited friendship is limited among our very close friends but metta or loving kindness is very wide we spread loving kindness without any obstruction we spread loving kindness to all the universe in this world when we practice loving kindness with the says metanta sabalokasmin man sambhavaya aparimanam uddham adoti tiryanche asambhadam averam asapattam when we practice loving kindness we think all the beings in the upper level lower realm cross everywhere we think about the people and beings in this universe and also without any hatred without any enmity without any obstruction we spread love and kindness to everyone we are unable to correct others but here we make a refuge we make a guard in our mind sometimes other people are angry with us we are unable to do something but we are not angry with them this is the thing that we should create here next with this says tittam charan nisinno va sayano va yavata sevida mitto not only we practice loving kindness sitting at the temple but we practice loving kindness in four forces when we sit when we stand when we walk when we lie down everywhere wherever whenever we are not sleeping we practice loving kindness in four forces we can spread loving kindness to the universe and also having practicing this path with says there is special quality that we have etam sating aditya brahmametam viharam idamahu 
if someone can be mindful in loving kindness he is like a brahman who are in the brahman realm brahmans who are in the brahman realm are living with these qualities not only just loving kindness but other three qualities but they are they are karuna compassion mudita sympathetic joy and upekha equanimity these four qualities are interrelated when someone practice loving kindness he doesn't stop in loving kindness he has compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity too if someone is able to live in this state of mind he is like a brahman even though physically he is in the human realm but mentally he is in the brahman realm he can attain some jhanas to as the result of practicing loving kindness these qualities belong to the second step of the path of liberation that samadhi skandha concentration or samatha next the last stanza is the very important thing when we listen to this discourse in sermons we mostly listening to other stanzas but this last uh, stanza is described uh, very rarely but the last stanza is the most important uh, verse in this discourse with the says dictin chanupadam silava dasanena sampanna silava or virtue or moral conduct can be practiced in the primary level too in the sansarik circle in that absolute truth if you practice five precepts you are okay you have a safety in the sansarik circle but here this discourse focuses on having virtue or moral conduct to reduce in ignorance or delusion it has a very special meaning dictin cha anupagamma silava without going to extremes without falling into into extremes we should have moral conduct virtue what are the extremes that buddhism says if you think there is a world there is something that is an extreme if you think there is no something that is also an extreme if you want to avoid these extremes you should know the very special teaching the heart of buddhism which is the patan sampad for the dependent for origination understanding the dependent origination helps us to understand extremes buddha says very clearly if someone knows the arising of five aggregates he doesn't go to the extreme of hmm, anhedism or there isn't something there is not something on the other side buddha says if someone knows the cessation of five aggregates hmm, he doesn't go to the extreme of sasata or eternalism there is something if you say there is a world it is true according to conventional truth but when we go to the absolute truth the highest truth in buddhism we don't say that there is a world or there isn't world even though you don't experience something there is something outside even though you don't think you are children your house they are there it is true only in the conventional truth but according to the ultimate truth absolute truth if you have something it means only you think about it 
when you think you are child you have a child when you think about your house or anything at the moment you have that thing if you don't think those things at the moment you haven't this is the absolute truth when you think your mom even though she has passed away your entire life is your mom it means you are near the mom end of your life in your chuti chitta if you think your mom it means you are ready to go to near your mom even though she has already passed away that is the thing that is the way why we have been been coming from birth to birth in this sansaric circle if you are not clever to understand what happens to my mind at the moment when we remember something suddenly our mind goes to the experience and we create some material thing mentally according to those experiences hmm, we are ready to go to the world again if we want to overcome the sansaric circle we should be clever to understand the meaning of impermanence according to the dependent origination what is some father the experience arises through our senses at the moment even though we say there are six senses actually finally we have only one sense and one object mind and mental formations you may think that you can see me at the moment actually when you recognize me your first experience has ceased you recognize me through your mind not through your eye that is the deep truth in buddhism and whatever we experience we experience everything through our mind when we understand when we realize something through our mind the first experience has already ceased this is the truth and also if we are able to understand this reality whatever we experience at the moment five aggregates rupa form so called reality vedana appearance and sanya perception sankara mental formation and vijnana consciousness these five things every moment arise with the conditions and they immediately cease at the moment when conditions cease this is the truth this is the bottom level in our life but unfortunately without listening to the buddha's message we are unable to realize this message that is why we need a kalyana mitra good friend we have already received this facility and first of all we should listen to this message through our kalyana mitra so mitra so good friends secondary we have to reflect on it again and again with wise consideration yoni so masikara and also bahana me panya by practicing samatha and vipassana we have to realize it completely and as the result of practicing this path finally buddha says as a wise person as an intelligent person as a skillful person the highest qualities that we have to practice are that samatha and vipassana concentration and insight meditation these are the highest qualities that we should create in our life what they are samatha means the concentration meditation the duration of practicing concentration using some meditation techniques in buddhism such as loving kindness breathing meditation recollection of the buddha recollection of the dhamma sangha those are the techniques meditation techniques that buddhism pointed out buddhism point out us to practice to create develop our concentration even though we are very rich even though we are well educated 
even though our children are now well educated even though you have a lot of lot of things in your life actually according to buddhism we are not clever we are not successful we are not skillful our skillfulness our proficiency depends on the duration of concentration if we can keep our attention in a particular hold some object for a long time that is one of the highest qualities that buddhism says it belongs to buddhism says both qualities that we have to practice one of the both karmas that buddha says atti bikkave kamman sukha sukha vipakam there are some actions which are white that cause white results it belongs to in the sansaric circle if you can keep your attention in a particular or some object for a long time it means you are successful in the primary level because your mind has continuously positive thought it means sukha karma sukha means white wholesome actions you know when buddha appeared in this world in the world people understood had realized only this karma white karma white actions they had developed their mind to the maximum level with concentration but after buddha appeared in the world with the point of doubt another karma what is that atti bikave khammam akhanna sukham akhanna asuka vipaka there are some actions neither black nor white that cause neither black nor white results this is the highest understanding in buddhism if you are able to realize this path actually you are the so fortunate person in this world with the understanding of the dependent origination if you can realize this path whenever we understand whenever we reflect on impermanence arising and ceasing of five aggregates at the moment we don't create any karma the reason is that we don't depend on anything outside or anything inside at the same time we see the impermanence in outside material things and inside mental formations too both of them should be realized should be investigated at the same time sometimes people may think that there is nothing outside but there is something inside they get something inside which is permanent actually buddhism says that even inside we have nothing which is permanent that mental situation mental formations also arise at the moment according to the present mental conditions and if someone has this understanding as the result of highest discretion wisdom he doesn't come back to this world he doesn't come to a mother's womb in the lower realms even in the human realm that is why with the says not only he has a virtuous life but he overcome sensual pleasures that is why with the says kame subhinaya gedam nahi jatu gabbase yan punareti as the result of practicing this path he will be reborn in the brahma realm oh he end his sansaric journey before he die in this immediate life this is the result of practicing this path for that we should have a clear understanding about heavenly path and deliverance path we should not we should not be confused about these paths first of all we should develop good qualities as good human beings in the mundane level by practicing five precepts by practicing generosity we can develop good qualities in the 
as primary level as good people in this world but we should not stop in this mundane level we have to practice the highest qualities that buddhism says us that is the thing that we should do here first of all we described 15 qualities that we should develop to make a perfect personality if we have those qualities actually we are in the high position in this world we have a very strong perfect personality with these qualities especially honesty gently spoken wisdom those are the special qualities in buddhism finally we should realize impermanence arising and ceasing not only impermanence but dukkha and anatta too sabbe sankara anichati yada panyaya pasati atah nibbindati dukkhe e samago visudya everything is impermanent he who realizes this truth this wisdom overcomes suffering this is the path to purify purity sabbe sankara dukkhati yada panyaya pasati atani bindati dukkhe e samago visudya everything is suffering he who realizes this truth with wisdom overcomes suffering this is the path to purity sabbe dhamma anathati yada panyaya pasati atah nibindati dukkhe he samago visudya every phenomena are egoless he who sees this reality with wisdom overcomes suffering this is the path to purity the more we reflect on impermanence the more we overcome ignorance the more we overcome ignorance the more we overcome greed and anger the more we overcome these negative thoughts the more we overcome suffering the more we overcome suffering the more we achieve the happiness real happiness contentment satisfaction liberation freedom enlightenment this is the thing that buddhism that the supreme buddha explains in this discourse if you have any question you can ask by the power of listening to this message may you be well happy and peaceful thank you tatya anjhi sambhadam punya sampadam sambhe deva anumodanto sambhe sampadhi sindhya
ดุกินเพลนะสัตว์ดุกินมีเด่นตัวเบียนเพลนะสัตว์เบียนะทิวิทตัวสมเทเวนะสัตว์สมนัสเวทตัวนิทินเมหะมสัตว์สวยฟัดเวทตัวเมตตาพิพาเยมเบลสิว